Hallelujah. Uh, we are starting with a new series on discerning in the Spirit. And uh, this next few weeks, we're going to talk about just an introduction to discernment. And I believe discernment is a, a topic in the church that has not received a lot of attention. A lot of people want to operate in the prophetic. They want to hear what God is saying. They want to hear the voice of God. They want to know about end times. They want to know about all kinds of things. But they do not have spiritual discernment. And I felt God laid it in my heart to begin to empower you to be able to get a stronger sense of discerning in the Spirit. And uh, so today's teaching, our, our 60-second program, I want to speak to, to you about what I call to train the church to discern in the Spirit. I want to share with you how God called me many years ago and give you a testimony on how God called me to say, I want you to begin to train my church to be able to discern in the Spirit. And so in a dream that I had one night, I was uh, dreaming that I looked over my parents' house and I saw what looked like a plow that was hanging above my parents' house. And I was a young boy and I looked at this piece of metal hanging over the house and I said, oh my goodness, where did this piece of metal come from? Hallelujah. I grew up on a, on a small holding, kind of a small uh, farm uh, in South Africa. And so I know about plows and I know about farming and that a little bit because it was just a small holding and so when I saw this plow, I was thinking, this thing is going to destroy everything when it falls on it. And the next moment, this plow began to come down. And like an airplane that's landing, it began to plow the ground. But it had no driver. There was no tractor to it that was pulling it. It was just this plow, just plowing the ground. And as a little boy, I ran behind this plow to go and see, what is this thing going to crush while it's coming? Because it's not been driven by anybody. And as I'm running behind the plow now, this plow began to turn around it, and it came straight towards me. And I was amazed at this plow coming towards me again. And so I jumped out of its way and it missed me and it made another turn. And it turned around again and came back towards me again. And this time, as the plow turned, it became a, a white Corsa Bucky. And then I thought, but this thing is not going to get me. And I, I dodged this Corsa Bucky again and it turned around and it swung around very fast and came towards me again the third time. And this time I thought, you are not going to get me. And I jumped out of its way into the sky like a, like a ninja in the movies. I jumped up into the sky and the Bucky drove underneath me. And when I was in the sky, I thought to myself, well, I don't need to come down. I can actually fly. And then there were some wires that touched my, my neck. And it just made me lose my height. And I slowly went down and I put my feet on the ground. And I, I saw thousands of cars came driving out of my parents' yard. And that was my dream. So dreams are very powerful and they must be interpreted. And so when I interpret, I'm not going to interpret the entire dream. It was actually about my calling that I missed three times. And how God's calling for my life was chasing me. And I kept on uh, dodging it all the time. But the plow was the thing that really got to me. And so normally when I interpret dreams, I interpret them through the scriptures. And so there's the scripture in the Bible that really makes us think of a plow. And... Uh, so an old lady came to me one day and as she came to me in the church and she said to me, God gave me this scripture to give to you. And I began to read this verse and it says here, Behold, I'll make you into a new threshing sharp instrument which has teeth and you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills like chaff and you shall winnow them and the wind shall carry them away. And the tempest or the whirlwind shall shatter them, and you shall rejoice in the Lord, and you shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. So this is a very interesting scripture she gave me. And when I received the scripture and I was reading it, I didn't understand the fullness of the implication of the scripture. I was a young Christian by the time that she gave it to me, and I didn't understand it. So, but it, so it says, 
I'll make you into a new threshing instrument with sharp teeth. Now, what is a threshing instrument? The word in the other translations is a threshing sledge. I'll make you into a new threshing sledge. So what is the threshing sledge? In the olden days, there was, they, would, they would cut off the, the harvest uh, of wheat and they would put them on these huge bales of heaps of, of wheat and now they begin to thresh the wheat. And what they do is they would have horses that has this sleigh and it has teeth underneath it and it would grind on the threshing floor, it would grind the wheat and it would crush the wheat and begin to separate the chaff and the wheat from one another. Then the man standing on the threshing sledge would take a threshing fork and he would throw up the wheat into the sky and the wind would blow away the chaff and the, the wheat would fall on the ground. And that was the way of separating chaff from wheat in the Old Testament. Hallelujah. Now, why is God giving me this verse? Because God is saying, I want you to separate between what is truly chaff and what is wheat. And God wants to really now, in these last days, begin to separate the chaff from the wheat. There's another verse that's quite amazing. And uh, you see, if we do not know how to discern, we can't really separate chaff from wheat. In Matthew 3 verse 11, John the Baptist is speaking about Jesus. And look at what he says, using the same type of analogy uh, for a threshing sledge. And he says here, Indeed, I baptize you in and with water because of repentance. That is because of your changing your mind for the better and heartily amending your ways with the abhorrence of your past sin. So he says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy or fit to take off and carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So he's talking about Jesus and he says, Jesus is going to come and baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. And then in verse 12, he says, his winnowing fan or shovel or fork is in his hand and he will thoroughly clean out and clean his threshing floor and gather and store his wheat into the barn. But the chaff he will burn up with fire that cannot be put out. Wow! So he says here, Jesus is going to come with a fork. We always say the devil is going to come with a fork. It's actually Jesus coming with a fork. And Jesus is now using the fork to separate the chaff from the wheat by throwing it up into the sky. And as he throws it up into the sky, the chaff and the wheat separate from one another. And that's what's really needed in these last days, is discernment. To discern the chaff from the wheat. And in the coming programs, I'm going to begin to teach you the great traps that many have fallen into, even Christians have fallen into, many churches have fallen into, and a lot of deception have been promised and prophesied about that's going to come if people are not able to discern. And so this is really an entire message that gets us ready because God is now going to separate in these last days the chaff from the wheat. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I want to pray for you right now. Father, we thank you so much for this revelation of the threshing sledge, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you come to thresh our hearts, that you come to, to, to break open things in our hearts, Lord, to come and teach us to separate the chaff from the wheat. Father, we want to make ourselves available. We want to humble ourselves and say, Lord, come and thresh out of me whatever is still chaff and burn up the chaff so that I will not be part of the chaff that will be burned, Lord, but bring into your barn the wheat in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that your Holy Spirit will begin to teach people to have a stronger spirit of discernment so that they can discern in their own lives, Lord, what is from you and what is not, what is your will and what is not, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you for having joined us in, in our first teaching about discernment. And uh, 
Come and follow us on Patmos Studio. Please make a comment on what you have learned and just how this teaching has impacted you. Uh, also come to our uh, Telegram channel called Patmos Studio. And there you will be able to get more information and there you can ask questions. And you can even follow us there as new programs are coming up every week. Hallelujah. Amen.